This video is about the miracle and power of garlic. Raw garlic. Don't cook it, don't heat it, don't do anything. Just pluck it and eat it. And it is one of the most amazing, antibacterial, incredible, absolutely healthiest things imaginable. I am convinced. I absolutely love it. I swear by it. And again, I am not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional, blah, blah, blah. But, so this isn't medical advice. I'm not, I'm not giving medical advice, etc. But I believe that garlic is one of the healthiest, most sacred kind of things out there. And the miracles that it's done in my life, to the people I know, me and my wife absolutely love it. We use it for so many different things. Who cares if it smells? Who cares? It's the healthiest thing on earth. I am convinced. We are convinced. And I just wanted to share it with you all because it really is incredible. So I wanted to dive into the archives on it and I found two books that mark my point and they had a lot of amazing historical like just tales and um, facts and all different kinds of things based on garlic and accounts of garlic and there were so many different times in the past where governments and people medical establishments tried to destroy the power of garlic they tried to convince the public that oh because it smells so much it's evil it does all these bad things nope it does everything amazing for you it is a great thing to add to your arsenal to keep your health up as good as it should be look at all these things that it does for you amazing this is why no one will tell you about it your doctors never will but you can use it for everything and you need small doses it do a great amount of work and however really however you go it's totally up to you but do your research, test your body out, test your levels out, and give it a shot. So I want to read some definite accounts from these two books because this stuff is amazing. This first book, there's a section called Empirical Evidence, and it says, Garlic has been used for thousands of years, both as food and as medicine. Most people around the world, especially those known for their excellent health, absence of disease, and long life, have used and are now using garlic extensively in their daily diets. Agreed. I have studied the diets of Russians and Bulgarians where onions and garlic are consumed in astronomical quantities. Not a single case of garlic poisoning has ever been known among them. On the contrary, healthy Russian centenarians often have told me that the large amount of garlic and onions in their diets was one of the main causes of their exceptional health and long life. According to the Old Testament, one of the chief complaints of the children of Israel on one of their many long journeys was that they had no garlic with them. Ancient Egyptian records show that the pyramid builders had raw garlic as part of their food ration. When hard-working pyramid builders threatened to leave the pyramids unfinished, their incentive to continue was stimulated with increased rations of garlic. An equivalent of nearly $2 million was spent buying garlic to feed the workers who built the great Cheops pyramid. The Vikings and the Phoenicians, warriors and adventurers, placed garlic in their sea chests when they started on their lengthy sea voyages. Garlic has also been attributed with miraculous healing powers and used throughout medical history in the treatment of many kinds of disease. Ancient records show that garlic was used as medicine as early as 3000 BC by Babylonians, Chinese, Greeks, Romans, Egyptians, Tartarians, um, doesn't say that but I'm sure, and Vikings. Most great physicians of old, Pliny, Diocerides, Hippocrates, and Galen, to name a few, as well as some more contemporary medical greats such as Air Weyerland, Werner Zabel, Ragnar Berg, Albert Schweitzer, <laughs> Bircher Benner, and many others used garlic to cure everything from intestinal infections and digestive disorders to high blood pressure, senility, and impotence. Pliny, ancient Roman naturalist and physician, listed 61 diseases that could be effectively treated with garlic. He said garlic has such powerful properties that the very smell of it drives away serpents and scorpions. Pliny claimed that garlic has curative power in all respiratory and tubercular ailments. According to the Talmud, the eating of garlic was recommended for many reasons. It satiates hunger, it brightens up the face, it improves circulation and keeps the body warm, and it kills the parasites. The Romans gave garlic to their hard laborers to impart strength and to their soldiers to incite courage. The Irish, Danish, and Russians used garlic for centuries as a treatment for coughs and colds. In Ireland, chronic bronchitis was treated with garlic by old-time physicians. Dr. W.T. Fernie, in an old medical book, Meals Medicinal, 
tells of garlic being effectively used to treat many diseases, including whooping cough and tuberculosis. He tells of a doctor who gave garlic to all his gallbladder patients. He also said that a garlic clove, when introduced into the bowel, will destroy threadworms, and if eaten, will abolish roundworms. During World War I, the British Army used garlic to control infections and wounds. The raw garlic juice was diluted with water and applied directly to the wounds with excellent results. The same method was practiced by Russian army doctors during World War II. Garlic and onions were given internally to increase resistance against infections, as well as used externally to speed the healing of wounds. The evidence goes on and on. There are so many awesome stories that go with this. It's just absolutely ridiculous. So many ancient cultures, I just had to include it because there's even an origin story about Siberia that I will find in there. I believe it says this one, yeah, on the origins of garlic. And this is from something called the Bauer Manuscript, which was found in ruins near Kichar in Kastionia, Turkestan in 1890. The document consisted of 56 birch bark page leaves, 54 of which were written on both sides in Sanskrit. The following text on the origins of garlic was probably written in the 5th century and originates from the works of ancient Indian doctors, especially Sus Rutu and Charaka. So the story goes as follows. On the holy mountain where the medicinal plants grow, the munis dwell, men with a sublime spirit. They test the taste, properties, shapes, powers, and names of the healing plants. When Sus Ruta has found a special plant, he asks the Muni Kasaraja. This holy man answers, The Lord of Asuras himself drank the well-shaken nectar. The holy Lanardana beheaded this lord. The pharynx stayed with the head. Blood drops fell to the ground from the pharynx, and they were the origin of garlic. Ever since, the Brahmins do not eat garlic since it stems from a corpse. Due to that also, its evil smell. Because garlic lacks a salty taste, they call it Rasuna. The people know it as lasuna in taste and digestion. It is sharp and biting, but also sweet in digestion. It is easy and, as the smell shows, also difficult to digest. As to its forces, it is hot, also an aphrodisiac. Most Moonies say that because of its sour, hot, and oily nature, it is likely to soothe the strength of the airy juices, and because of its sweet and bitter nature, as shown in its taste, to soothe the bilious juices, the bile, it is made to subdue the strength of the phlegmatic juices because of its sharp, hot, and biting nature. The Creator created garlic to remove the defects of these three juices so that it can heal all diseases. Awesome. Amazingly ancient stuff. And then there's another story, another origin garlic and onion story from uh, the venerable Kalu Rinpoche, abbot of the Sandup Darjeeling Monastery in Darjeeling, India. Translation was forwarded by blah blah blah, the text is, uh, here we go, it's just awesome. In the beginning, the merit of human beings was almost that of the gods. So the physical human form was much finer and more subtle than it is now. The world was filled with light shining from human forms. There was no need of any external illumination and there was no sun or moon or star in the sky. But the merit of human beings slowly deteriorated, and so the radiance in the human form degenerated. The physical form became co coarser, less subtle, and the world grew darker. In order to alleviate this darkness, the most powerful gods, such as Indra and others, together with the Titans, stirred the waters of the ocean, and out of this the sun and moon came into existence. Also out of this came a potent elixir which was kept in a crystal vase. The gods would drink this potion much as we would drink tea now. On one occasion, one of the great titans thought to appropriate this elixir for himself and swooped down on the gods, stole the vase, and flew away. The gods chased him, and realizing he could not escape, the titan drank the elixir. The gods hurled their weapons at him, and one of these sliced his body in ribbons. But because he had taken the elixir, his body could not die, and the blood and flesh of his body fell to the earth. Where it fell, onions and garlic now grow. This story explains the dual nature of such as garlic and onions. The unwholesomeness of the titan results in the odor of garlic and onions, which is so powerful that it can destroy the effectiveness of some mantras and tantras. Nevertheless, because of the elixir the titan had consumed, these plants are extremely beneficial to one's own body. Therefore, if one is using lower tantras, meditation systems, one should not eat garlic and onions. But if using higher tantras, such as the Anatara Yoga Tantra, then it doesn't make much difference. 
so wow just so interesting this plant this root like vegetable amazing uh, aspect of our world it has so many cool things about it and i totally swear by it and i'm not going to um i apologize for not having these things sync up but i'm just reading these different selections that I thought you all would like and uh, I recommend taking a look at these books or uh, just taking pausing some of these and reading the pages. There's one part which is kind of interesting relating to Tartare. It says, In the 13th century, Marco Polo passed through Yunnan in China and found the people eating meat raw. The poor sort go to the shambles and take the raw liver as soon as it is drawn from the beast. Then they chop it up small, put in garlic sauces, and eat it there and then. And then they do likewise with every other kind of flesh. The gentry also eat their meat raw, and some believe this to be the origin of steak tartare. And it says, since Polo used tartare as a synonym for Chinese, it is doubtful that this Yunnan use of garlic is the origin of steak tartare. But there is also quotes about it coming from or originating near Siberia. So tartare, again, is this another thing that they've tried to make us hate because it's an invention of the old world, the Tartarians, and much more? There are so many cool facts about garlic relating to all of this. This one part says, The fact of garlic's significance in the diet and pharmacy of civilizations past is incontestable. The Babylonians of 4,500 years ago were great lovers of garlic, and it is noted by K. Hintz in his History of Nutrition that garlic took a special place at the table of one Babylonian god-king. It is said that some 395,000 bushels of garlic were delivered to the court at one time. The seafaring Phoenicians and Vikings took garlic with them in long voyages, both as a nutritionist food and a valuable remedy for the various ailments common to sailors. So many. The ancient Egyptians used it to bribe. This one is interesting. The garlic as a cosmic symbol. The garlic, as were all the bulbs of the Allium genus, was held to be symbolic of the universe. The series of successive layers of skin forming the bulb and clove represented the concentrically layered heavens and hells of the ancient Egyptian cosmogony. But one aspect of the garlic separating it from the other alien bulbs is the clove structure, which when revealed by cutting away the superficial skins, resembles the design of the solar system, with smaller bodies rotating around a central larger bulb. The seriousness with which the people took the garlic as food, medicine, and religious symbol is seen in their habit of, wear of swearing by garlic when taking oaths. Very interesting. Apparently even King Tut had a bunch of it. It says the Egyptian mania for garlic is demonstrated quite conclusively by the... Um, Tack home and drawer in their flora of Egypt. It is well known that the garlic and onion were involved in the mummification process, but few know that six bulbs of garlic were found in the tomb of King Tut. Since garlic and onion were medical and magical as well as culinary plants, one can assume that the garlic was meant to ensure health and ward off evil spirits. Tack home and drawer also described clay models of garlic bulbs that were found in pre dynastic cemeteries in Egypt. That's pretty amazing. And then this, again, more amazing garlic incredibleness that relates to all of our awesomeness and will help keep you healthy now. I recommend actually trying to grow it as well. I think it's very easy and I am beginning this process very soon because it is necessary and I have a feeling they're going to pull garlic at some point or try to eliminate it and try to minimize it at least from the public. So we got to grow it. So Egyptian Spring Festival. This festival, Sham al Nasim, Sniffing the Breezes, falls on Easter Monday, but Monday Muslims as well as Coptic Christians celebrate it. Needless to say, it is an old pagan festival. Customs differ from place to place, but Sham on the Seam is celebrated from one end of Egypt to the other. In Cairo, people get up at dawn and old and young alike breathe a green onion crushed in vinegar. That day, all that that all the careness without distinction of age, sex, or religion go out to sniff the breezes in the public gardens, in the countryside, or on the Nile boats. An immense throng moves through the streets and invades all the green spaces. They chant, dance, light firecrackers, wear hats of bright colored paper, or crowd onto carts known as caro, made of wooden boards mounted on wheels and drawn by a donkey. Wandering merchants sell branches of green chickpeas, lettuce, lupins, and other snacks. Lunch is usually a picnic outdoors. The gardens most frequented are around the Cairo Dam. There they eat lots of colored hard-boiled eggs, stuffed grape leaves, the leaves are particularly tender in this season. Malo soup made with goose or duck, fillets of fish, 
accompanied by green onions. The traditional foods of this day are eggs, fruits, salt fish, and above all, onion and garlic. The day of Cham and Nassim, or Spring Festival, they cut up onions on the door sill so that one soaks it with their juice, always with the aim of turning away from the house every kind of illness and evil during the year. They hang over the door a bundle of onions linked together. This usage was observed by myself in the remote and mostly Coptic province of Fayum by Mr. Asherson in the small Moses presumably blah, blah, blah. So, uh, yeah, they were uniquely associated with this festival, but there is no way to determine which pharaonic festival it defends, descends from. So they're not really sure. And again, you never know where this uh, stuff comes from. The Palestin Palestinians apparently used to use it as an aphrodisiac, connecting it with the Garden of Eden, saying, in the ancient world, garlic was a sign not only of sexuality through its powers as an aphrodisiac, but a sign also of fecundity, sorry, in general, one legend told in Palestine Palestine connects garlic with the Garden of Eden and the Tree of Life. Once, ladies, long ago, the garlic grew very tall, so tall that the top of it could not be seen. Then this blessing became a curse, for there were too many people in the world. There was no room in the world for them all. So God in his mercy shortened the garlic, and it has been small ever since. But it is still good to eat for health and long life, and good, too, against the eye. Those must have been strange days, dare you say, then when the garlic was tall. The tree of knowledge, if they ask, as many artworks show, you know, was it an apple tree or an alium tree, which is part of the onion and garlic family. Magic garlic, in the Odyssey of Ulysses, he mentions garlic, a magical garlic named moly. It was used by the ancient Greeks for magic and medicine, for placing garlic on piles of stones at crossroads as a supper for Hecate, the underworld goddess of magic, charms, and enchantment. Another magical or quasi-medical use of garlic uh, was now bolt down these cloves of garlic, well primed with garlic, you will have greater metal for the fight. The metabolic effects of garlic may explain the belief in garlic's strength-giving powers. Garlic stimulates gastric secretions, perspiration, and is held by many modern herbalists to be a tonifying substance. Tonifying substance. It has also been observed by zoologists and anthropologists that the powerful primate gorilla generally situ situates his home where wild garlic flourishes, which he eats most eagerly. But this is merely circumstantial evidence for garlic's powerful effects. Yeah, it is an amazing thing. I recommend it to everyone. Maybe lastly, I will cl Oh, well, nah, you check this out. There's all kinds of accounts from Pliny. There's all kinds of different accounts from ancient Rome, supposedly. The Nereides, the malicious nymphs who worshipped garlic and <laughs> displayed garlic to fight off evil. So it has a crazy duality type history associated with it. It is a miracle. And it is key to saving Earth from a terrible medical industry that does not do good for you. All these antibiotics that they're putting people on are so detrimental to everyone's health, especially when garlic, an absolutely simple $2 for several bulbs at Trader Joe's, and you can have an amazing amount of the healthiest thing imaginable to you. It feels so good. It gives you an energy boost. The ta people that people that just deter are deterred by it by the taste are completely missing out. And anybody that says they have stomach problems with it, test it out in small doses first. You just retry it again. Trust me, it is an amazingly beneficial thing. So good. The oil, if you have blemishes or any infection, bug bites, anything, garlic is a miracle. Definitely incorporate it into your life. You will notice it immediately. This is a Save Earth video because I feel this information to be crucial. It Again, I am not a doctor. I am just offering some simple great advice from the ancients, or really showing you advice from the ancients because we love that stuff here. We know not to trust the moderns. They are going to go down in history as the worst health people in the history of time on our planet. Absolutely a disastrous, leading everyone in the wrong direction towards the chemical castration and toxifying of all our bodies when we have all the answers in nature surrounding us. Perfect and delicious, amazingly easy to grow free for in some ways and just absolutely in harmony with our bodies, our souls, our minds and everything. It is so important to be eating the right stuff 
and to stay away from the toxic nastiness that they are trying to kill us with. The chemicals, and I, I randomly saw TV the other day, and it's basically as if all of TV is sponsored by pharmaceutical companies. That should not be the case. They are getting and turning into a monster, and they, you know, everything you can do to undercut them is beneficial. Garlic, garlic, garlic. Go out and get some today. Start chomping on it immediately. You will not regret it. I wish you all very healthy lives. Bless you all.